Hello viewers! Our cars have many sensors, each having a role of its own in the vehicle's overall operation. Obviously, should any of them fail, you can expect certain problems depending on what you're dealing with. But figuring out what's exactly to blame is not always a straightforward job and may take some investigation and testing. And today, we'll find out how to tell if the map sensor has failed by going through several relatively easily diagnostic techniques. Let's go! Before discussing the testing procedures, it's important to know what the map sensor actually does, so let me guide you quickly through the, its function and possible symptoms of a faulty one. The map here stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure, which is actually the pressure of air getting into the engine. This is key information for the vehicle's ECU when figuring out how much fuel to add to the mixture, especially on a turbocharged car. We actually have a separate video right here on this channel, dedicated to the map sensor only, where all this is described in a bit more detail. If the map sensor fails for one reason or another, you might expect to see anything from a check engine light on the dashboard and various engine running issues to a drop in the fuel economy or increased emissions. In worst cases, a bad map sensor may send your car into limp mode or prevent it from starting whatsoever. Obviously, most of these things can be caused by other failures, so let's see how to check and test the map sensor. The map sensor is always somewhere inside the engine bay, so it's time to pop the hood. In most cars, it's fitted on the engine's intake manifold, and by that I mean this thick section called a plenum. Just look for a small plastic box-shaped sensor held in place with one or two bolts. Some cars have a map sensor fitted somewhere on their body, such as for example the firewall. In that case, it will be connected to the intake manifold with a rubber hose. The most straightforward method of testing the map sensor is by using an OBD2 diagnostic scanner. With it, you can check the stored codes and see if any of them relate to the map sensor's operation. If it's not working properly, you might see some of these codes. But more importantly, you can use this scanner to monitor the actual readings coming from the map sensor. You'll do this by going into Live Data section and, once there, looking for a Manifold Absolute Pressure menu. How this looks and how it's called exactly can differ de depending on the device you're using. Now, what you'll see at this point is the reading from the map sensor, which, with the engine off, should read one bar. The reason why you are not seeing zero is that the sensor is reading the atmospheric or absolute pressure at this point. Next. Turn on the engine and watch what's happening with the map sensor readings. When you press the throttle and the air rushes into the intake, these values should go up and when you release it, the pressure should return to almost atmospheric, some 15 psi. The obvious problem here is that this test will show you if the map sensor does give readings and it reacts to throttle, but not if these readings are correct. One way to get around this is by getting some reference values for which you will need a service manual or some other reliable source of information. Another way is to remove the sensor from the manifold but leave the wiring connected. Next, attach the pump like so and pump up the pressure to a certain level. Then check the readings from the sensor using your OBD2 scanner. If these don't match, there is something wrong with the, either with the sensor or its wiring. Also, while you're at it, if the sensor looks dirty and covered with soot, you can try to clean it, as this helps in many situations. Simply remove it from the engine bay and put it on a workbench, take a can of brake cleaner and spray it all over the buildups. It may take several tries until all the gunk is resolved. Let the map sensor dry for a few minutes and then refit it to your car. Redo the tests and see if this made any difference. Another, I'd say, very professional method involves using this tool, a multimeter, which is something that any car enthusiast should have in its arsenal. What you can do with it is check voltages and resistances from the sensor as well as the wiring, often allowing you to easily pinpoint the problem. So, if you're considering buying this handy device, we strongly recommend checking out the guide we put together right here on our website. 
Apart from the multimeter, you'll need a wiring diagram for your car to know which wire is does what. But as a general rule, many cars will have a map sensor with three pins, just like this one here. One being the ground, the other is the voltage supply to the sensor, usually 5 volts, and the last one is the signal wire that takes the measurement back to the ECU. Sometimes, though, you'll have a fourth pin and corresponding wiring. This is usually for the intake air temperature, which might be integrated into the map sensor. Ok, having sorted all this out, let's now see how you can check the map sensor using these tools. For a start, uh, set the multimeter to 20 volts and with the engine off, check the battery voltage like so. Basically, what you're doing is measuring the voltage between the positive and negative posts here, and if the battery is in good shape, you should see approximately 12.5 volts here. This is important because a weak battery might offset the measurements. Next, as said, it would be ideal to have the manufacturer's service manual, which you'll use to identify the wires. There are usually either three or four of them, and you'll want to know which one is which. Ok, next take the multimeter, connect its black lead to the nearest ground, and use the red to back probe the 5 volt reference wire first. Then turn on the ignition, but don't start the engine just yet. The multimeter should now display approximately 5 volts, verifying you're getting a good reference signal. Now back probe the signal wire in the same way. With the engine still off, you should again see nearly 5 volts here. Then, with the multimeter still hooked up to the signal wire, turn on the engine and see what happens. If the map sensor is good, you should see an immediate drop in voltage, and once the car settles on idle, the readout should be between 1 and 2 volts. Still, for exact values, you might want to double check your factory service manual. So that would be all the practical and relatively easy ways of testing the map sensor. As you have seen, that doesn't require much skill or some special expensive tools, so you can easily give it a try. I hope this video was helpful and if so, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. But if not, and the map sensor still keeps acting up, something else might be causing the issue. So to continue troubleshooting, check out other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com for more detailed repair guides. Bye!